Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage TV and Magazine. A few weeks ago, we introduced you to Ansel and Brittany Bachman, who operate Patriot Farms in Leonardsville, Pennsylvania. We learned how the young couple got started market gardening and how they've grown their operation in the past five years. Today, we're going to ask them to continue that story as they show us around their farm and the many hoop houses they use to grow vegetables and greens, as well as their pasture-raised pork and chicken eggs. So why don't we just go into H2? Yeah, yeah. I guess. This is H2, and this is where our wash pack area is. This was us. the greenhouse I built in 2017. That was the first one I built in 2015. Smells like compost oil. Yeah, it's fine. This is pack area. Um, it's heated in here minimally in the winter, yep. so it's kind of perfect for the wash path. So we set this up um, as an assembly line. So say we come in with lettuce, right? The first thing it does, um, these tubs fill up with water and they have Hudson valves. So we just plug up the hole at the bottom, walk away and they'll shut off once they're filled. Oh, okay. Bubbler. Yeah. Green, um, green bubbler. Green's bubbler. Yep. So, right, so they come in for their first wash and then they'll go into the second wash and then we, put, we make a jacuzzi essentially. So the, the water gets like bubbled, like the lettuce gets bubbled. And then they'll come into one of two yeah, we spinners. Yeah, the shop back in reverse through PVC pipe with eight holes, holes, holes in it. drilled in it, and then I can tweet it okay. down and actually create the bubble. Yeah, these are the waves. Yeah, it so is supposed to I have a diffusing motor it's supposed to get wired in, but honestly, at this point, I'm not even going to change it until we're Because you're moving. Like, yeah. Unless yeah, yeah. that thing dies on me. That's like year five on that shop back. That's right? awesome. <laughs> Brand new shop yeah. back. I cannot believe that it's still running. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing. So, um, yeah, so then, then, right, so then it'll come in. Because it's got to push pretty hard to get yeah. that aerating. Yeah, you would think that it's good, but hey, it's it still works. running. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. Like, so then it comes in our salad spinners. So we have two salad spinners. Salad yep, um, nice. Come and get salad uh, spun, and then it gets put in uh, trays, holes in them, and then we'll stick, um, like, the fan on low on top of, like, we'll put the fan literally right on top to really not get it overly dry but you get rid of the excess moisture that the, the spinner, spinner didn't get yeah and then we set up the scales on here and then we pack it out um it gets recorded it gets packed out and then it gets put in a vermont cart and taken to our walk-in so it is like a little assembly line uh it's really in the summer it gets really hot in here we put two layers of shade cloth on this um and as soon as something is harvested and packed out it has to get put in the walk-in so or the make, wilt yeah so we do a ton of back and forth and it's obviously not efficient we walk back here we're getting a mobile or a, a kit basically that you assemble of cooler panels so it'd be a, a the walk-in cooler we'll just get put together as a kit on the concrete floor inside the wash pack and then our current wash pack that's outside will become a tomato ripening room so okay. that'll be kept a little bit warmer at about 55 degrees instead of 38 and then that's where all the tomatoes are going to go to, to store them um, uh, here's a farm map that Ansel drives, so you can oh, kind of see yeah, everything. I love that. So, um, yeah, Ansel's test life. You can see my life. surveying background. Yeah. Still do cat work. Same with our cash tickets. I mean, those yeah, so here. right here we are now. Our walk-in is all the way over here, so it's, it's so inefficient. Right. So our new wash pack area will be here, and our new walk-in will be right in the wash pack area right there. So it'll eliminate this massive walk we have to do every time something's packed out. So here's... Um, yep. Yeah. Here's the cash ticket. This was one filled out. So this is for the BC highlight wear and then because this is a planting. Oh yeah, this is a planting I can see that. Um, so this is gonna be for planting the onions here. This one's um, unfinished actually. It's yeah. filled out, but it, it it's has filled out ready to be done, but it wasn't done yet. That's why I completed by and we put that down yeah. there. Yeah, and then every time something's done we do a task ticket and then we have a bio uh, a binder and we uh, Keep track yeah, of everything we, for record keeping punch, so, so like organic there. certifier comes and audits us we literally just have everything there in the binder there's like um, a checklist and then each one whether it's a planting or a cultivation one of the other ones we have a general, general ticket 
I think turnover it's a, ticket. Yeah, a turnover. So um, basically, uh, the checklists vary. Yeah, you here's know, a harvest depending log. What, and the other thing we want to do too is color code these. I want to yeah. start printing them. Each of the four different task tickets will get planted on its own color paper just to make it. Yeah, even a lot more efficient. Yeah. So that is. And yeah, everything we keep everything upside down and covered in here because I've learned a lot um, growing or, you know, as I built the farm. And I used not, I did not use anti condensate plastic when I put these first two tunnels up. And this will just get a lot of drips. Yeah. yeah. A lot of drips, yeah. which yeah, is yeah. another great reason we want to, you know, move out of here for the wash pack just because we won't have condensation drips. We won't have birds being able to fly in. We don't really have insects. Because basically, before we come, like, we, we do a, a, a clean and sanitize. It's the first thing before we do any processing every day that we do processing. In the other building, we'll be able to. I mean, we'll still have to do a basic wipe down, but more or less you'll clean it at the end of the day and it will more or less be ready to go the next day because it's going to be yeah. sealed up and climate controlled too, which will help with getting the, keeping the vegetables cool and help with employee uh, morale, I believe. Absolutely. In yeah. July, yeah. if you can walk into somewhere that's 70 instead of 90. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seedbeds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each or you can buy two for $44.95 or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. So we used to harvest, wow. so say Quick for like cut. a market, we need to harvest a hundred foot bed of lettuce. We do it by hand with a little knife and it would take hours or, and we'd be miserable. Like, or one of these knives. a little Johnny's knife or one of those but then, lettuce knives. Uh, have you seen the green stuff? No. This is All right, awesome this thing is a dream. Spread. Another, another tool that runs off of an 18 or 20 volt drill. See with the battery in, uh, this blade here oscillates back and forth. These noodles spin. Noodles. Um, get a battery so we can show them. And then it flings the lettuce into here. A little basket to really yeah it's yeah. um and so it doesn't bruise the lettuce or yeah. anything because you've got yeah, the little okay the, the trash bag on the top was because we realized it would fly out the back a little bit and then you just like walk it over the lettuce like so you yeah, somewhere else high. Four. okay and and you do a little back and forth wow. action with it and so going. right so now we've just cut and it's uh, completely rebuildable too what, where it would right. take us they, an hour or two and like a quarter. broken back to harvest right. 100 foot bed of lettuce five minutes now wow. yeah so really like should, and then you can just dump it into a tote yeah into so one then of our this red is open so you just dump it like that into yeah, a tote yeah it just slides out into a tote and um super dreamy uh, and we um, just ordered more the blades are replaced so like everything's on there is replaced so we actually just ordered another basket for it because we want to take them off take this one off and wash it and but I mean, any part on here, any screw or whatever, so, you can order each individual part through Farmer's Friend or on the website. This, that's just, just terrific. There's yeah, because not a lot of pump, you know, I mean, people well, don't make things to be fixed or rebuilt anymore. And people don't make things for medium-sized operations. Yes. They make things for large scale yes. or they make things for the oh, hobbyist. Yes. But this is just There's perfect. There's been a huge resurgence with like, There's, just like this size farm. Yeah. Um, the, the one acre this, market garden yeah. in the last couple of years is a lot of small tool manufacturers, yeah. Farmer's Friend being one of them, Never Sink Tools being another one. Um, this Never was, Sink was a farm yeah. themselves. This was around seven or $800 this year. Yes, I think it still so is again, about like the same thing. So again, it's a big thing, investment, but it pays oh. for itself easily. And that and obviously it didn't come with the drill. Right, 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 sure. You can use any drill, you know, if you have a Ryobi or whatever. So, right. And he pulled this trail. Really, this has been awesome. Um, yeah, so this thing is super. Yeah, it, I, you may have seen. I had communication on the farm. The fleet. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Can't stand it, but it's better than streaming. <laughs> she can't stand it except when she needs me, yeah. and I'm not right next yeah. to her, and she loves it. So if I need her, she'd rather not have me. So uh, this is the first tunnel, as you can see, like where the gravel is. This used to be my wash pack area. This is oh, okay. Rabbit, so. All right. Um, it's, you can like definitely see in stages how we've grown. Sure. Um, 
so yeah, this was over winter stuff that was planted in the winter and over winter. So this lettuce to the right is on its way out. You can start to see it kind of turning. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're experimenting with like some specialty mixes of greens this year. So we've got that growing. Um, and as you can see, the soil's really dead in here. So the compost is going to be a game changer. We really are excited. <laughs> What Arugula, I think, Arugula is what's on the on the for the first planting. Yeah. We try to get um, two to three crops per bed per season. Um, so like high intensity, and, like we're yeah, like really quick with things. So like you know, because arugula is only in our, our lettuce greens are only in for six weeks. Usually. Okay, yeah, it's like four, days. four weeks yeah. to maturity with two harvests yeah. kind of thing, roughly, give or take. So this is another farmer's friend caterpillar tunnel. This one's the gothic tunnel because you can see it's got a peak. Yep. This one's so, designed to shed snow. Yeah, so this is designed to handle snow to load. Temporary. Um so opening up these tunnels though is a pain because you can see how Anthony's doing that. So we've got some spinach that was overwintered. Um some frost off. I got kind of blown around. It needs to be cleaned up again. Um but uh yes yeah, so we've got carrots in there. We did cucumbers in here last year. Uh We've got the overhead watering, we have your blinds in here, and yeah, so that's what's in here. But then this will get compost in it because the soil just doesn't look happy. Like stress, right? Like the stress has been like real. Like, yeah. Um, um, we did a lot really quick. Like, we've been able to grow really, really fast. But on the flip side of that, like it's chaos all the time. Yeah. And like cortisol, my stress levels through the roof all the time, um, which isn't sustainable. But are you are you about as big as you want to be? Yeah. Now you just want to get yeah, more efficient. We want to learn how to what we've got. We want to get really good at growing with what we've got, and we don't want to get any bigger. Other than uh, like branching off with a pasture before, maybe expanding right. that into more of our woods. But right. yeah, this is the extent of how big we want to get. Um, that's our walk-in cooler, so you can just see how inefficient it is. Like how far we have to walk. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, right. Super grateful to have it. Get off your harvesting all the way over on. The other side of the wood pile. Yeah. To get to the wash house. To go back there and then just to, bring to it go back. here. Yeah, yeah. right, it right. Doesn't make sense. Especially because no we don't have a golf cart or anything. Yeah, we have little And I don't know carts. if we want to go that route. Right. I feel like sometimes you get a golf cart and then it becomes more of a toy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or people use it when they don't really need to use right. it. Right. Yeah. So we have Vermont and... little hand carts. That we like. I got half of this cleaned up. The rest of this I have to clean up yet. But we have our garlic in here. Basically, this was charred in kale. We pulled the kale out and put the garlic right in the same plastic yeah. last year. And we'll probably look what fertilizes. That's the it. first time we've uh, ever grown garlic. Ever grown garlic. Planted this on Christmas Eve. Planted it incredibly late, but um, couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. It's actually growing. Still grows. Yeah, Mo most growing. all of it too. Yeah. Like, yeah. It did really well. Yeah. Um, I am able to do something that's low carbon emission. I can use animals that are lovely to be around. The work I'm going to be doing is the best work I can think of. In my opinion, we're definitely at a critical moment that the work we do today will greatly affect tomorrow. I don't use the horses because of the traditional aspect of it. I use them because they're the best. They're the most superior technique we've got to not damage the woods. She's a guilt. She's just bred. Uh, Still Pharaoh in June. I just confirmed it. I have like a little freight code reader. Yeah. She's all spunk. She's. She's an old spot. <laughs> you like that, huh? You like the scratches? Ooh. Watch your ears, Sue. Say hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. You gonna open your eyes and say yeah. hi? Or? So, yeah. My breeding stock is my babies. I don't get attached to the unwanted, like the little babies. But right. My breeders right. are my girls. Right, right. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, they get overwintered. Um, they're separated right now, Martha and Abby, because Martha just had her babies. Yeah. But in the winter, they're together, um, and we bed them down really well. And, um, and they actually do. Definitely so creatures of herd creatures, because yeah. she has this whole paddock. Right. You know, yeah, she's, right yeah. She just wants to hang out here. Right. She's yeah. right there, so she's making it less like. Which so is why we put the. Off the farrowing ward right, right so they could still see each other um but yeah they do surprisingly okay out on the out in the elements in the winter like we bed them down sure. like, really well and, right right um, sure and these porta huts are you familiar with these yeah yeah so we get them i think they're just made out midwest 
Probably. We get them as a dealer of them. Uh, they also had a Harrisburg uh, for us, about two hour drive, Chambersburg. Um, so that's where we got them. But I feel like they're from Illinois or they're somewhere Iowa, or somewhere out that way. Um, they make ones even, like this is a small one, and okay. that's the next size, and then they make bigger ones even for like cows or whatever. So, she's a, yeah, so she's she's all spunk. They all have their like personalities. She's like a dog. She's like my favorite. She's dog. terrific. She's great. Um, yeah, so it's been really wet this spring, so normally we don't like how muddy everything gets, but we're trying to keep everything kind of bedded down. Um, hi, Martha. They get weaned in two weeks? Two, three. Two, three weeks. So we start them in this because you don't want to start the babies on the electric. Right, right. And then we'll actually Hi, remove this. We'll, we'll, put a, we'll, we'll put a piglet netting, which has even closer vertical strands uh, in between. And then we'll take these out. And then the double electric, essentially train the little ones to with a double electric fence. Uh, and then they'll get separated. And Mama will go back with her uh, probably for maybe a month or so because then she'll be separated out and uh, we'll probably just move this fat off to another area. But sure. You know, the idea is the chickens are going to come down and fall around and then we can go down below. These are the cubal mounds I was talking about. Okay. All right. A lot of settling and I need to do some more work on them. They're actually sure. probably going to get some more topsoil on them. Um, and now we're going to plant, strategically plant some different fruiting bushes or medicinal either bushes or or shrub or, or uh, trees you know obviously i'm not full sun in here but i'm not full shade either right yeah yeah uh, Hi, kids. Uh, basically everything we left we took out all the dead trees uh left the uh, mostly scary the poplars down in that corner uh but these are mostly scary so right so like in the conventional setting like breeding like i would um we would have like we'd always have to assist with bear wings. Yeah. Um, there'd always be kind of like. Yep. Yep. Um, there'd be mummies and there'd be stillborns. Um, right. Since breeding out on pasture and feeding like a more balanced diet, I've seen none of that. Um, so it's really awesome. I don't have to assist get, with her farrowing. So they get lots of compost or crop yep. residues. So like we ripped out jar and spinach the other day. It's been over winter. It comes over here. It gets fed to them or the chickens. We'll, uh, you know, if we'll they don't eat crop. it, it's going to get turned in, kind of, or they okay. turn it in, essentially. Hi, beautiful. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's honestly crazy just to be going from, like, one extreme of farrowing to kind of this. And, um, baby describing it. What, what is the, um, uh, breeding of the boar? Oh, he's, they're large blacks. Okay. So it's large black old spot crosses. Uh, they're both heritage the breeds. Black. Black piggies with pink feet. They're so cute. <laughs> Sometimes they'll pink noses. They are super cute right now. They are, they are terrific. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. We normally don't like ever like having like a area get this beat up with mud and stuff. Sure. Overgrazed essentially, but it's just this season, it's just kind of what it is. But we have the mobile coop, so it's, do you want to demonstrate that? Yeah. Answer? Um, we've had a bunch of different chicken coops. This is and so this is the coop of my dreams. It's uh, Justin Rhodes. Yeah, yeah. This is his design. Okay, ready? That's how he moves the coop. And he's got a really good uh, podcast. Yes, yes, we love his. Yeah, we love or a video cast, I guess. Or... Yeah. So essentially, that's how. Yeah. We move it. Yeah, yeah it's we awesome. Move it forward like a section of a deck. Okay. And it used to have a kickstand, but the hinge broke, so I just do this. And that's because if uh, if they all go to right. at the end of the night, it'll pop like yeah. this. And right, just, right, that's a problem. And, and, you know, sometimes we forget to move the thing and come to the back next one. Like, oh, the, the coop's doing a wheelie. <laughs> you know, well, and it's not even, you know, saying you know everything. It's like, well, we were doing it this way. We've invested this money. 
we got to keep doing it this yeah, way to right. get something back out. Right, of it. whether it's and working or not. If you keep doing it, like like let's take the loss there because if you try to keep doing something that's not functioning, it's not working, it's only going to take you farther down the hole of things are are not you know the way right. you want them to be, and you know the, a tool that we might have spent a lot of money on and now don't use. You know we're, right. we're we have some of those now and it's like, right. Well, yeah, and that's for me. That's a big thing. Even with vegetables and stuff, and oh, I'm getting better. It's like it's like end of the year and like no we can't root the last tomato I, I want tomatoes in december like you know like trying to hold on to the last uh, you know uh, and that's one thing we really you know are realizing with the market gardening in order to to be consistent and be able to nail our successions we have to sometimes rip out something that maybe we didn't want to rip out and i'd actually gone around and you see there's a gourd so i threw a bunch of pumpkins and gourds on here after the wedding last year just to let them volunteer yeah, seed yeah. It, exactly so that's yeah. like one of the things and then um i'd like to put a couple so like the idea is on the downhill side on this side you would plant a tree you know somewhere here so right way, to hold it back caught, it's absorbed it's held and then the yep. plants or the trees can utilize it yep um, um you'll see this but as part of permaculture I discovered hugel mounds like seth holzer's thing that he does over in swiss are you familiar with hugel not mounds? a bit Okay, so uh, a fugal mound is mound. Uh, a mound um, built on contour and you usually start by scraping a, a small ditch and then you take all your, your brush and your slash and your stumps and stuff like that and wood and you put it in the ditch and then you rebury it with soil or compost and stuff and then you plant on it. And it's on contour so it catches all the water and anything that would be eroding and holds it there. And then you can grow crops or fruit trees or whatever so we established two of those last year. So basically, um, we have some slopes over there. They're not nearly as steep as, you know, uh, some of the other examples of the Hugo Mounds that I've seen in Europe or whatever. But I was like, well, we want to do pasture blocks. I'm like, I don't want to be losing fertility, you know, right. off and stuff. Right. So we put in these Hugo Mounds and we have areas that we get, we can get about 10 pasture blocks. They're, you know, what, about 60 by 60, maybe, yeah. or a little give or take you know, for a per pasture block and then we move them every couple of weeks. Um, and it's through the woods, but we're, you know, it's, it's sparse woods because we have a, a problem around here in the last several years, the ash borer beetle, mm -hmm. it's yeah. killed off 95% yeah, of the ash trees. Sure. 60% of the property I bought back there in 2015 was ash. Sure. So it was all dying anyway. So we took the bunch down, um, cleared an area completely. And that's where we're growing vegetables now, you know, an acre worth put in a bunch of field blocks and then um, just took out the dead of another section, leaving all the living trees, that, which is mostly cherries, poplar, maple on that piece of ground. I don't really have any oak over there or anything. And uh, that's what we're using for pigs right now and where we run. And then we follow the chickens behind them essentially to do the whole scratch out the manure. And we, you know, last year we were building a Hugo mound. So like, you know, things were in transition and we weren't hundred percent ready to, use all the space for pasture so but i think this year our rotation will be you know, the best it's been yeah yeah so i guess we've been doing this like full time since 2018 and i think we kind of just dove into it i had never grown vegetables before so naturally i ended up with a vegetable farm um and Ansel had never worked on a farm before so we've learned everything we've learned through like books, books and and massive pile and like like online video courses essentially. Oh, and yeah, and master classes. Yeah, like master classes. Couple, we did a bunch of those. Classes. Um, we've learned a lot of what not to do. <laughs> a lot of that. But the way we've learned not to do things is not by listening to someone saying don't do this, it's by doing it when they said don't do it and then going, that's why they said don't do it. Yeah. yeah. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.